I was at the doctor today and a cast was being removed. And have you ever seen a cast saw? Well, it looks <laughs> something like that. And it's a saw that you use to remove the cast, but it's not like a chainsaw that just goes through the cast and down possibly into your flesh. No, you can put a cast saw down on your skin and it won't actually cut it. The blade is slightly serrated and it moves very, very quickly back and forth. If you apply enough pressure, this can get through the material of a cast, but if you lightly touch your skin with it, it doesn't cut you. I know because I asked the nurse, to put the cat saw directly on my skin. And they did. Science. It's about touching stuff. Welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your best comments, corrections, and questions, and I apply a nerdy saw of science to them, <laughs> harmlessly, mind you, and then I tell you what's coming up next week on this very channel. Hint, <laughs> it's about beans anime beans. But getting right down to, ow, I need a bean. <laughs> wow. But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we were evaluating a very fun idea, even if it's a bit um, rogue billionaire -y. Should we nuke Mars? We went through all of the research that we could find and we took all the suggestions from billionaires that love anime, but we came to the conclusion that today, given today's technology, the amount of resources it would take to get the number of nukes required to Mars, marshalling all of the world's resources to Mars, try to terraform it in this way, it's not really feasible and or practical. In fact, it's wildly impractical. So nuking Mars is probably not the best way to turn the red planet into Earth too. And of course, you can watch the full episode if you want to learn more. It is pinned in the YouTube comments on our YouTube channel, but what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Ray Cross, who says, would it be more practical to terraform Mars by launching nukes at it or by launching a tiny black hole into Jupa Jupe? He said Jupiter, but I'm more fun. Well, Ray is suggesting a very fun concept that we actually went through in a previous episode of Because Science, where we tried to turn Jupiter into a star with a minuscule, a microscopic black hole. And it would increase the solar radiation in the solar system such that it could possibly heat up the Martian atmosphere or the surface. But with the stellification of Jupiter, we're talking about a time scale of hundreds of millions of years. I think it would be much easier to terraform Mars than it would be to turn Jupiter into a star. We don't have either the technologies that we would need to do those kinds of things, but pushing a black hole into Jupiter -Jup is definitely harder. I think it'd be actually easier to push Mars into a closer orbit to the sun and get more uh, temperature and radiation that way than it would be to nuke it. Oh, I thought I had something else. I didn't. Adam Larson, Cray Zombie, Sam Smith, uh, and uh, many of you say, hey, I noticed you used a Musk Watch intro in that last episode. Hey, I like that show. What happened to it? Well, I like that show too. Let me be perfectly honest with you. We started doing that show, Dan and I, Dan Casey and I, because it was a lot of fun. And you may not know why it was so fun. It was basically because Dan and I did not read any script beforehand. <laughs> We read everything cold, and Dan is a master improviser, so I played off him, and it was a lot of fun to do. We went at the show just wanting to have a good time with this very meme -y figure, but as Elon Musk became more and more controversial, or doing things that could be considered controversial, it became less and less fun to do the show, so we eventually just kind of stopped doing it. We'd love to do something like it, or continue, you know, that kind of banter, but, you know, it's dead. So Musk Watch is currently no more but who knows what happens in the future. Bruno Cordiero says, Kyle, not like you were a super villain or anything. <laughs> good, of course not. But where would you make your secret lair? Huh, uh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, if I were a super villain, where would I make my lair? It's hard to say, you know, off the top of my head because, you know, I've never thought about this kind of thing. It's just so far outside of my own experience. And oh, sorry. Yeah, I was coming in hot. I've had a lot of coffee. Yeah, 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 no, we need a new location. Yeah, some guy called Bruno. He gave me a good idea. Are you sitting down? Okay. The new location is inside a wasp nest. <laughs> yeah, a big one. Titanium on all the stingers. Oh, sorry. I was just answering your question in the form of a phone call. DM4N20 says, uh, that Elon Musk flamethrower, it is commercially available though, right? 
Well, first of all, it's not actually a flamethrower. They sell it as not a flamethrower, and it's not a flamethrower if you want to go with the military sense. And why would you even want one of those in the first place? Only like a, a villainous person would want a, a boring company flamethrower. That's, that's nuts. Beans, even. I mean, what kind of person would even go through all the trouble of trying to order one of those and waiting for months for one of those and then not even buying the fuel canisters for one of those and then never using it? That would be so weird. It's not a flamethrower, though. It's not. If anyone knows a flamethrower, it's me. It's not a flamethrower. Ah, I can't even pull the trigger. <laughs> Why is it working? Oh, oh, that's the pilot light, right. That works. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to Quinn Silver Smith, who says, well, how could we just maybe unlock extra gas from all the soil, all the regolith of Mars? Maybe using the perchlorates that are in the Martian soil, we could get extra oxygen. Maybe we could get extra carbon dioxide. Hmm, can we do that? <laughs> Well, I like where your head's at, Quinn, and I will say that one paper, the most recent paper on this subject, released in 2018 in Nature, says basically what you're saying, that we could unlock more gas from the Martian soil, we did say that in the episode, but to release enough of this gas, not just oxygen, but other gases, from the soil to get more pressure into the Martian atmosphere, quote, would require processing material over the entire planet to a depth of at least 100 meters. Think about that level of engineering for a second. Every single square meter of an entire planet mined down 300 feet just to release enough gas into the atmosphere. That kind of scale <laughs> gives you a sense of just how hard terraforming Mars with the resources on Mars would be. But for thinking about that and pointing all this out, you are indeed, Quinn, a super nerd. Ah! It's not a flamethrower. But of course, I'm not always right. I frequently touch stuff in doctor's offices that I should not be putting my hands on. Oh, just for like sterilization purposes. Uh oh. <laughs> so what did I get wrong last week? By far the biggest correction comes from Chamber of the Wraith and RJ Wrights and a number of you who say, well, Kyle, the biggest thing you're forgetting here is that Mars doesn't have a magnetosphere, a magnetic field surrounding the planet that can protect it from the dangerous solar wind. We are protected from this solar wind on Earth. And therefore, even if you could create an atmosphere on Mars, it would be ripped away by these charged particles. Yes, the magnetic field on Mars is no more. It's internal dynamo, spinning liquid solid metal that would create a magnetic field around the planet, it is dead, it is no longer spinning, and that field has faded. So, yes, even if we could insert gases into the atmosphere, they would be ripped away by the solar wind. In fact, this is happening constantly, and it's happening right now. Mars is getting less and less and less of an atmosphere over time. However, many of you say, well, maybe we can nuke Mars's core and get it going again, or do some crazy scheme. I will say that papers have looked into doing this in a much simpler way. For example, you can see in this figure from a recent paper about terraforming Mars and changing its magnetic field from Green and Hollingsworth et al., you can see that there's now a magnetic field around Mars. How they do this is not by altering the core, but suggesting maybe some giant inflatable space device that could create a magnetic dipole, like north and south magnets, that would in effect give a magnetic shadow to Mars. If you put it far enough away from Mars, it would create this kind of space where Mars would be protected, and you'd only need to generate like one to two Tesla, and some of our best MRIs already produce more than that. So maybe you don't have to radically transform Mars by doing something with its core and its atmosphere. Maybe you can just put a bunch of magnetic space balloons out there and protect it that way. Still sounds pretty hard. Our next correction comes from Zeta1011 who says, also the lower gravity would cause long-term living there problems, no? No, maybe, I don't know. Mars does have a 40% of surface gravity because Mars does not have the same mass as Earth does. And so on Mars, you would be a lot lighter. You'd still have the same mass, but if you stepped on a scale on Mars, you'd be lighter, which might be great to see as kind of an illusion. Yes, you would be 40% lighter on Mars, but would it make a difference? Well, it's definitely different from being weightless, and we do not have any studies, as far as I know, about the long-term health effects of reduced gravity. So not microgravity, say you were on the International Space Station and you have to work out all the time with you know, straps on so you can induce uh, some work in your bones and in your muscles so they don't deteriorate and you don't waste away, blah, 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 blah. We don't currently know if being only 40% as heavy on the surface of Mars would really lead to any long-term health effects 
effects? That's an open question. Although some other commenters have suggested, why don't you just wear like weighted clothing like Goku or like a vest or something like that. And then you'd be the same weight on the surface of Mars. Eh, that could work. <laughs> Excessively bored says, Kyle, you're the best. That cannot be statistically true. But also, did you mean to write 10 to the 12 through 20 times 10 to the 12? A number such as 20 to the power of 12 just seems strange. Yes, when I said the estimated cost of getting all the required nukes to Mars, I meant to imply that it was between 10 and 20 trillion dollars, which is a lot, but not four quadrillion dollars, 20 to the 12 dollars. That'd be obviously a lot more, and I sit corrected. Kelly McCabe says, would your spit freeze on Mars if you spit out on Mars like a trash person? Or is the pressure significantly low enough that it would boil? All right, all right, you got me. Yes, I was trying to demonstrate how cold it is on Mars. Your, your spit would freeze, but if you take into account the Martian atmosphere, yes, your spit would just boil on your tongue, I think, before you could even spit if it was exposed to the atmosphere. So you're not even, it's just like, peh. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, sounds funny, but it's not. You'd pass out and die up there. But by far the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to HQZ, who says, wow, a lot. This might be the nerdiest correction I've ever seen on this show. And what they are saying basically is that if you were to heat up Mars and still add air to Mars, there is another problem. That problem being that when the gas gets hotter, because of the reduced gravity on Mars, some of that gas will now have the ability to escape, to achieve escape velocity and just leave the atmosphere. This happens on Earth with light gases like hydrogen and helium near the top of the atmosphere. So on Mars, we have a problem that if we're adding gas, we're gonna be constantly losing some of that gas anyway. And I will say, H, that some of the studies do point this out, that we'd have to constantly add gas to the atmosphere to make Mars livable. One write-up about this very topic from Stanford says, uh, quote, the atmospheric gases would need to be constantly replenished in order to properly shield inhabitants and warm the planet. It is very likely that life on Mars will always be hazardous for colonists due to space weather. H, you are right on the money, and you provided a lot of accurate numbers in your comment. That might be the nerd, one of the nerdiest comments on YouTube right now. It must be, and for that, you are indeed a super nerd. <laughs> It's not a flamethrower. Now, moving right along, this week's episode of Because Science is, what's inside a sensu bean? Ooh. Oh, oh. oh I'm fine. Woo, that was a close one. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are jumping back into the Dragon Ball Z-averse to give our best suggestions for what could possibly be inside a sensu bean, a magical little legume that can miraculously heal very general grievous injuries. What could chemically be inside of there? Hmm, could it possibly work in our real world? Could a tiny little talking cat with a cane make one? No, but the other stuff, we'll try to figure it out. But before we give our chemical suggestions for what should be inside a real sensu bean, please go watch the latest episode of Because Science All About Terraforming Mars and leave me your best nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and not a flamethrower. And don't forget, energy is a unit of measurement like a kilogram or an inch. It's not something a self-help book can sell you, but they'll try. Oh, they'll try. It's all nonsense. Woo!